My name is Beth Guy. I'm with SEO 411, and uh, we are a digital marketing agency here in town. Um, we do everything from build them to rank them. And I think somebody told me, the other, walked up to me the other day and said, we just make websites work. And that's probably the quickest, most concise way to say what we do. Um, tonight's topic is going to be almost a two-part situation because I'm, I want to lay the groundwork and then next week we're going to actually learn or next month we're going to learn how to do something in this sense. So I'm going to talk about blogging and I'm going to talk about um, podcasting. And I, I think the thing is, is that as we get through 2021, these are very important topics. Um, so the first thing I'm going to say is that um, everything I look through and every vision I do is what is Google going to do with it and how are they going to perceive my business? So when I build a website, it's put together to make sure that website uh, has a visibility in Google. Every small business owner needs to make sure that that is a priority. Um, there's a constant ebb and flow or push and pull, if you will, rather, um, between um, what the website looks like and how well the website ranks. So when you put those two things together, um, you have to learn how to balance them and how to make that work right. Uh, Google has changed through the years and it continues to change. And that's kind of why I want to start talking um, about uh, blogging and where it was, how we got here and where it's going and what you need to do. Um, what I will say to you guys to start with is that Everything you do needs to be well-rounded and holistic in its approach. So all things that you do to market your business, all those things need to work together like gears um, so that you end up with a very um, productive and um, good ROI from any marketing that you do. Uh, I want to point out something so that everybody uh, understands this. Um, it is going to take you 17 to 23 touches for a customer to be willing to do business with you. And the thing is, the days of the early internet, when you would go Google something, pick the first thing and call them, those days are pretty much in the rearview mirror. So we have to be very mindful of how to build the brand and how to get people to be willing to talk to us. And how am I going to reach out or be memorable that people are going to want to do business with me? And... That's the whole point. And as entrepreneurs and as business, small business owners, whether you've been in business two weeks, two hours, or 20 years, this is where we are today. Um, it, it may not have been where we were five years ago. It might not have been that way five months ago. So if anything, this last year has taught us is that we need to be able to pivot and be able to make our businesses work and be able to come up with ways and strategies so that no matter what happens, we're in a good spot. So with all of that said, um, initially uh, blogging was set up as sort of like a dear diary that you could put on the web and, you know, put whatever your musings of the day were and how that all worked. And the thing is that Google kind of took possession of that about, gosh, it was, this was back in 2007. So it was what, 13, 14 years ago. Uh, they saw the emergence of the blog. They went and bought blogger.com, which was a private entity that used to be able to pl publish blog content on, and it would put it out there for you and make you a blog post. And it was like a good situation. Um, and then Google came in and took it all over. So that was the, that was the, like the first little challenge. Um, where it started to where we go today with it, they're so far apart. It used to be that uh, blogs were just short things that were just some brief set of information that you you may you want to may put out there maybe just a little bit about news what was going on in your company. Um, if you were it was rainy that day and your whole business was you know you know impacted by the rain, um, you know you could go ahead and and put that those items down and make you a make a blog post about it. Now. The blog is probably the most critical piece and element of the website, and I continue to see it being done wrong. So we'll, we'll start with that piece of it. Um, what makes a blog wrong is when it doesn't live on your website. So if you have a website and your blog lives on anything other than your domain address, you immediately need to write down note that means I need to fix that tomorrow. 
uh, because you, when you put your posts up on somebody else's website, you're giving away your equity to somebody else. You're giving away your um, intellectual property, and you're also giving away your business, basically, and gi giving it away for free when you put it on somebody else's website. I still see people doing this on all over the place. And there really is no reason why, because you, you should be able to put your blog on your own website. Uh, WordPress has the functionality. Um, even though I am not a Wix, Weebly, Squarespace, web.com, Shopify advocate, even they have a base blogging function. So um, if you were all in front of me, I think I'd probably ask you what your definition of a blog is, but because I can't actually see all your faces, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tell you that a blog is um, an information and opinion piece that may or may not have long term value. Meaning that tomorrow, today, my opinion might be uh, one thing, and and in three weeks, my opinion may change to some but something else. Um, and it's and it's a great platform to have. Uh, everybody should be participating in it. So. The thing is that I find a lot of problems with when I talk to small business owners is they do not know how to come up with topics for it. They do not know how to um, write them. They don't know what the purpose of them is. They don't know what they're supposed to say. They just know that some person in a talking Zoom room in the middle of HCC told them they should know make a blog post. Um, and the reality is, uh, I'm going to kind of tell you about all of this now tonight, um, but you need to have a plan to have a blog. There is just no uh, getting around it anymore. Uh, the end user expects it and they expect to see one because they use that blog to gauge what kind of company you are and if they want to do business with you. Um, and that probably brings me to my first point of this is that it's okay to have a personality in your blog. And I think when we were all, especially the little uh, us on the older side, when we were taught to go to school and write an opinion piece, we would come out and we would sit down and we'd say, this is my opinion. This is why it's my opinion. And in conclusion, that's why I've supported my opinion. And it was very rote and it was very repetitive. And we said the same things in the same structure repetitively. And I'm doing that on purpose um, so that we all um, would uh, have, you know, a very formatted and structured situation. And the thing is that a company blog on the company website shouldn't really have that much structure to it as anymore in this regard. Of course, it needs to have sentences and be structured in that way. But you need to be not so formal. You need to figure out what your voice is and what your personality is. And I mean, I am my for me, I can speak about myself. Um, but I would say um, I am, you know, I'm very funny. I'm very good at twisting words around and I'm very good at using the meanings of words and in multiple ways so that I get a, you know, that I, and I make my own words and word structure up and people just laugh and chuckle and because they know that's, that's my personality. And I'm not afraid to write a page that talks about that. Um, my first question says, what platform would you recommend to use that supports a student's income? Well, see, here's the beauty of it. I'll, I'm a big WordPress advocate. And I, I, I will tell you, there's a lot of reasons for that. First place, WordPress is free. Um, and you should be able to find a hosting company out there that will let you do a blog for, you know, anywhere from seven to ten dollars a month. You know, it's, I mean, it, it's about it, the cost of fast food, maybe not Taco Bell, maybe more like McDonald's, but it's getting it's like six, seven, eight dollars a month at most um, to be able to do that. Um, next question said, is a blog necessary for, for nonprofits? The answer is a blog is necessary for everything. Okay, um, and the and the problem is is that um, that's that question right there is one of the things that do should I be doing it? Everybody in this room, everybody at this seminar, should be running a blog on their website. If they're a nonprofit, if they're a small business, if they're a corporation, um, I don't care which entity you are. But for you to be taken seriously, you've got to build a brand. 
And that brand is what you say and how you, your, your brand is amplified by your blog. So you want to t- you want to use it. You want to be putting it out and you want to use this vehicle because it's an extremely important vehicle. Now it used to be, um, you know, kind of a throwaway afterthought. We would go in and we would write an article and we'd put it on the website and we might summarize it on a blog post. But the one thing that, that, that blogs also do is they have the one page, but it gives a date and a time um, hierarchy to it. You'll see when you go to a blog site, it may, it may have uh, the months of the year or the year, the calendar years that that blog. So you can go back and you can view somebody's opinion over time. You can get the information that you want. Some will be sometimes our most popular posts will be featured. And, but there's always an archive of what the information is and good blogging software helps build that archive. So everybody needs one. Yes, if you're a nonprofit, you can have one. I don't know um, what, uh, you know, what the nonprofit is, but I mean, I, I have worked with multiple bro- uh, nonprofits um, and some are for you know children organizations i've got one that helps feed um the um i'm gonna get to that both of you that are talking about videos and blog content um uh, i will get to both of you in just a minute because this is all the same it's all the same thing of where we're going here um but the moral of the story is everybody needs one. So I'm going to jump ahead a little bit and then I'll kind of come back. I've got three people here saying, you know, what's the difference between a blog and a video blog. And, and, and I'm going to, I'm going to say to you that you need to do both and, and it's not either or. So some people are out there and they say, um, you know, uh, I'm going to write a blog and I'm going to write it out. And other people go tack a video in and that's their blog post and that's it. So, Hey, Beth, while you're going, somebody's asking that question that comes up often, wordpress.com or wordpress.org? Wordpress.org. I didn't get down that far yet. Did I miss it somewhere? No, it's it's in the chat. Remember you told me. Yeah, it's wordpress.org. Wordpress.com charges you and they charge you through the nose and you don't own your files. Wordpress.org, you own them. So you want .org. Um, And you're right, that does come up a lot because that, yeah, that's a very common and popular one. So anyway, so between video um, and a regular blog. So the thing is that I say is that they're both pretty much the same thing, but one's a written version and one should be the video version. I don't look at it as a written blog versus a video. Um, I look at it that both should be present um, in the, when you put it out. And, And the reason why is this. So remember I told you everything I do looks through Google and everything is holistic. So your audience, there may be some people that want to watch a video. There may be somebody that wants to read and there may be somebody that just wants to listen to the audio and you should offer them all platforms. So we're going to, we're going to kind of talk about how to put that all together here in just a little bit, but it's not either or, and I'm not an either or person. I'm uh, we're going to do this holistically and we're going to put it up for everybody because what else I'm going to say is that, you know, under the age of probably 35 is more video minded. Over the age of 50 is probably more written minded. And then you have the whole group in the middle somewhere that they, uh, there's a there's the whole, hey, I'm going to put it on a podcast and listen to it while I run or I go through the supermarket or whatever I'm doing. I want to be able to take it with me and I may or may not want to be able to watch. So with that said, So with that said, we're going to do everything. We're not going to just do parts and bits and pieces. And I'm going to teach you to do everything. I think if you just did a video blog, you're going to have a problem because in just doing the video blog, what happens is that it can't be indexed as well. And because it can't be indexed as well, um, what ends up happening is it doesn't get found as well. And one of the things is if you do this right and you put all these pieces together right, this gets to be a big microphone or megaphone and probably the megaphone is probably the better answer to it. Um, and that's, that's, you know, kind of what I would put that down as. So let me see, we've got a couple more questions coming in here. So I want to just make sure I want to make sure I answer you guys 
as we go through because I, you know, like I said, I, I can get way out of hand with the amount of information I'm dumping at one time. I've got one here. Um, somebody's guessing and, and a- hoping they're asking, uh, answering this. A blog is like a live conversation, isn't it? How do you get interaction with a blog? Well, a blog can be like a live conversation um, in some respects. In other respects, it's an opinion piece. It's like the op-ed section of your website. That's what I'm going to say is the best way to, to do that. And then you're going to use that blog and that podcast to be able to amplify everything that you want to say. So that's what's going to, that's kind of what that's going to be. But no, I I don't, you will get interaction if you do really good job of what you put there. Um, What I will also say is that uh, if you see, especially a small business owner in a blog and you want to make a content, a, a comment, it helps that website and it helps that website owner if you actually make a, a good comment, not one that says, great post, I enjoy reading you. Um, what you would want to say is something like, hey, this was a great topic. I learned a lot about blogging and podcasting and thank you for doing that. It's always a benefit to go ahead and put a uh, comment on a website. So I, I will I will say that. And then, you know, if the site owner's watching their stuff, they're going to come back and go ahead and and post that up for you. So there's that as well. So uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a not, it's not as interactive as you're making it sound. What I will say is what you're familiar with is the micro blog that's called Twitter, because that's as in essence, what Twitter is, is a micro blog. So don't, don't forget that aspect of things either. All right, so let's come back over here. It says, can a blog be similar to a business Facebook page? The answer is absolutely not. Um, a blog and, and business Facebook pages are not even remotely related to each other and they are not even like each other. Um, first of all, again, understand that what you do in a public forum on your own property and on your own website, and, and I, I guess I, I need to say this because just like realtors are like the biggest purveyors of problems of this. All of you that go and put your stuff on Facebook and then don't have your own website anymore. The only person that benefits from that is Facebook. So having a business Facebook page or having a, um, you know, being on HAR or any of those type things, those don't benefit you. You always need to start with a property that you own and, what I mean is you own your website. That's where the content should emanate from. If you want to go push that out to Facebook, I'm fine with that. But those things are never the same. So they should never be in the same kind of thing. Um, so don't, don't, let's, I don't want to get them confused at all. Cause that is that, that, that night and day difference. Okay. It says, can a blog be similar or no, that's the same one. I just read that. Sorry about that. Is a podcast the kind of blog, which one would benefit my personal brand the most? Okay, so that's the question that I'm going to answer over the course of this night. And then next week, we're going to talk about how to do it. Or next, excuse me, next month, we're going to talk about how to do it. Okay, so the answer to that question is which one would benefit? You have to do both. Now, there's going to be people that says, oh, no, you need just a podcast or somebody else is going to say, oh, no, you just need a blog. And a lot of SEO companies will say, you just need a blog. Um, Yeah, you need a blog with a podcast. There's not they're they're the same thing. Um, And if you do this right, you can build one piece of content and use it across multiple platforms. And I think that's what starts to make this uh, work and run better and lets you amplify better. So. A blog is dependent on the the written part of the blog is going to be dependent upon Google uh, only in the sense that it's going to go through, it's going to have to read all the text on the page, um, and then it's going to have to determine what that blog is and where it's going to rank, okay? The podcast part of this, if you do this right, um, the podcast is then amplified in a different way because people will go to podcast platforms and they may look for your content and they'll find your blog. Um, and that's a good thing as well. All right. So the podcast end of it tends to travel farther than the blog. But if you attach a written blog to it, Google sees the, the, 
how far out it went on the podcast and benefits the written part of the blog. So you need to be do both. There's not two ways about that um, at all. It needs to have both pieces need to be done simultaneously. In my opinion, that's the way I'm advising everybody to do it, which is, um, and actually I'm kind of doing it in reverse. I'm saying, come up with the bot podcast write the podcast and then uh, record the podcast and then match the um, blog post to what the podcast was about and call it the show notes. So you would show, call it the show notes for um, Apple and Google Play's benefit or Spotify or the, the, the podcast platforms. But you would also do a good job of writing those to meet the criteria of a blog, which I'll, I'll hope to give you tonight before the night's over. Um, but to meet the criteria of that blog. So if you can use the show notes to meet the criteria, what ends up happening is I have a win in the podcast. I have a win in the, in the, in the blog post. They all work together. And now all of a sudden Google's given me a heck of a bump because this page has so much value that they can't ignore you. Um, and that's even the littlest, smallest business versus the very biggest business. This is one of those things that becomes a great big equalizer that, that if you do this right, this will start to come in and start to help you on both sides of the equation. So that's that's what you want to do on that. Go so ahead, Sandra. How, how long for the podcast and then the summary note? The summary notes are like a, 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 a boiled down version of the media's content of the of the podcast, right? Well, okay. So this is where I'm going to... So, you know, sometimes I say things that you won't hear somewhere else, but that's why my stuff ranks and the somewhere else doesn't. So just kind of put that in. So what you just said is right, but it's also wrong, okay? So when I sit down and if I'm gonna sit down and I'll end up taking this class and putting it on the internet and making it into a podcast, okay? And it will be part of our internet marketing podcast, which I have, if you go look for us on Apple iTunes, or Google Play or Spotify or wherever, we're there. But when I sit down to write the show notes, I know what I said in, the, in, in this session and I know what I've answered, but I don't write it. Beth said this, Beth said that, Beth did this, Beth did that. In minute 225, Beth does X, Y, and Z. No, that's not what I did. What I do is I go in and I summarize what is the importance of blogging and podcasting and making those two things work together. So I would write, and I'm going to use the word an essay, i.e. a blog post that summarizes this show. But if I detach the blog post and the show, and they were in two separate corners of the world, what would end up happening is you eat both of those pieces of content could stand on their own. My show notes are so in depth that you don't even have to listen to the show. Okay. Versus, um, my, uh, podcast. Well, there's the dog again. It's not never a clinic without my dog. Um, but without, with the uh, podcast part, it goes out, it can stand alone the blog post can stand alone. And when you do it that way, what happens is you reinforce the situation because you're introducing two pieces of content that are somewhat similar, but one is just not, who wants to read a regurgitation or the lines of where something is gonna, at, line, at one minute and nine seconds, the dog barked. No, we don't wanna do that. We wanna come in and we wanna talk about what is the value of doing this, why we wanna do this, and we wanna make it really readable so that what ends up happening is these things can work in tandem and not, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to go you one further. So let me tell you the end result of what I do in my life and what I've advised my clients to do. And this goes for everybody. Okay. I want everybody to make a video and I want you to sit down and I want you to talk about whatever your topic is. If you're a real estate lawyer, sit down and talk about real estate law. If you're an SEO person, I want you to talk about SEO. If you're an accountant, I want you to give accounting advice. I want you to do whatever you do. And I want you to do it with your iPhone or your cell phone. And I want you to write, do it on just a little tripod on your desk. And I want you just to talk, just like I'm talking to you. So now I have the video. What I then do is then separate the video and the audio. So I have the video, the video goes out to YouTube. I now have a video <laughs> blog, which is the first person what they've asked me. 
The next thing I do is I separate out the audio um, and I make that the podcast file. And then I sit down and I write the show notes and I put it all together. So everything I do has a video component, an audio component and a written component. And they go out all three simultaneously at the same time. And what happens is now all of a sudden I have a reinforced relationship because the podcast, the web, the video and the um, written word all live on the same page and they all help support each other. And it goes out way further and way faster. Okay, so just understand, we're kind of getting a little bit ahead of where I wanted to go tonight, because I'm going to actually show you start to finish how to set this podcast up next time, because I think that's the, so let me tell you, I sat down one day and I said, hey, I'm going to start a podcast. And first of all, the staff laughed at me. They said, okay, like what day of the minute or the day are you going to go make a podcast? I said, look, I bought a spiffy camera. I'm going to make a podcast. He said, yeah, that's not going to happen. Well, COVID happened. And I was like, well, I had planned to do this anyway, but all these Zoom things got filmed. Um, they're all recorded. So I was like, okay, so I have the film. I have the, the audio. So I sat down to go ahead and do it. Do you know it took me two and a half days to figure out all the steps that I had to do to get a working running podcast? I'm like, I don't know how anybody without tech skill would ever be able to figure this out and put it all together. So what I'm going to do is next month, we're going to sit down and actually say, start to finish. This is what you have to do from the point of where you have the audio, where you have to go set your accounts up and how you go and do it. So I will do all of that next time. But this time, what I want you to work, um, get in your head is video podcast, which is just the audio of the video and the written word. And we want them all to be in the same place, on the same page on your website, not on Facebook, not on HAR, not on Twitter, on your website that you own with your domain. And that's where it needs to be and that's where it needs to live. Okay, so um, that's that question. All right, so let's just say, what would be the key points including your blog to bring the reader to engage them? Okay, so first of all, um, you know, I don't know, how many of you know David Letterman? I don't know if you remember him or not, because, you know, as time's going on, less and less people remember who he is. Um, but he used to do a top 10 list almost, I think, every night. OK, and that's the best way to start a blog is to sit down and think about what are 10 points that you want to cover? What are seven points that you want to cover? What are 27 points you want to cover? I don't know, care about how many points, but sit down and in your head, start thinking about how many points do I want to cover? I'm going to hold my little notebook up. You see this here? I actually have the points. Oh, you can't see it because of my background. But I actually have a notebook of the points that I want to cover written on the page. And they're what I want to talk about tonight. Now, we'll see if I get through them all because the joke is I never do. Um, but I make sure that I have some idea in my head of what and where I want to go with something. Um, I am fortunate that I work in an industry that um, has a lot of opinions and a lot of things to say. Um, I, I struggle with it. I don't struggle with lawyers. I struggle with engineers. To me, that's a very difficult topic. Um, it's very hard to sound smart and pithy and everything when you're talking about um, you know, math and square roots and, you know, what is the uh, chemical makeup of a, a piece of plastic? I mean, so there is that. It's interesting to other people, huh? Mm -hmm. Or taxes. Or taxes. But see, taxes can be very interesting because you could be the tax man, okay? <laughs> and the pun on that is when you say the tax man, you think IRS, right? But my blog would be called the tax man and it would be somebody telling me how to beat the IRS. See, that's the way I, my brain works. So, um, and I would go as far as to see if I could get a cover version of the Beatles tax man. And that would be my intro story. So I, I don't have a problem with tax advice because to me, it's the how to beat the IRS versus not beating, you know, what, you understand that's inter engineering engine. You obviously notice some um, engineering would be like the hardest thing to me. Unless so while you're taking a sip, someone's asking this question. We have a lot of Tiffany's in here today. And one of our Tiffany's says, does your blog have to be related to the theme of your website? I have a nurse staffing agency. Will the content on the blog have to be related? 
well, yes. I mean, but I'm, I'm trying to think of what the context on that would be. Like if you're, you want to say, like I might have um, the struggle for nurses during the COVID. What's the difference between a, a, a temporary nurse at a hospital and a permanent nurse at a hospital? Why is it better to be a, you know, a floater rather than it is to be on staff? I mean, so there is blogging kind of topics that you can, what, what do I, how do I need to go to a hospital? I mean, you could blog and podcast a lot. And I mean, you could, you know, nurses, you know, nurses are people too. the podcast. And you could just start talking about anything that affects nurses um, because you might be, a, you may be a staffing agency for them and your customer may be the hospital, but also it may be the nurse that's unhappy at her present hospital. So you need to like reach out to everybody at the same time. So there's, there's not, I mean, I wouldn't go put a whole blog post up about the Texans. I mean, I, I so I don't know where you're drawing the line of what it needs to be about. I mean, I, I do mention the Texans because I love them, but that would not be the theme of my blog. Go ahead. I think you're hitting it. I think what we're what you're saying is right on on target. It doesn't. It's not all, always only about nurse staffing, but it's something that makes a nurses feel like they benefited and they warm up to you and feel like a more relational relationship with your nurse staffing agency, right? Yeah, so and that's that the way you you would post content that directly affects your website and your business, but you all, but it affects your business to relate to them, have them liking you, feeling like. This isn't just an um, an IT kind of company that they're interacting with, but that they 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 respect you as the owner and your corporate culture and that kind of thing. Well, so, and see what's interesting about that. So remember the part where I said 17 to 23 touches, and what mm -hmm. we normally think is you have to go out and you have to send a postcard, or you may send a postcard three times, or you may send somebody junk mail and spam mail and all of this. But I guarantee you these people that we have, you and I have hundreds of people that come through here every month. And what they all have learned is this podcast and this web, this clinic lives on the internet. So if you put in internet marketing clinic, Houston, you get all the classes that I give. So they are constantly interacting. So what happens is three months will go by and I'll get somebody that calls me and says, hey, I took your class, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but you know what? I've been kind of following this. I had one person say, I'm stalking you on these classes. I'm like, okay, that's good. I think that makes me feel comfortable. Not really. Um, <laughs> but it's all good because at the end of the day, what they're doing is they're coming back and they're interacting with me. I, I also just had somebody buy a website from one of my customers with the understanding that I would stay on and help them. And it was because what he said to me is he said, I wouldn't buy this website had I not heard you speak on this subject. And how did he hear me speak? He heard me speak through this whole podcast thing that I've been doing here for the last year. A podcast, a, you know, SEO in a box on the internet class that I've been doing. It's kind of been fun. I mean, it's been, it's been good, but I mean, eventually it'd be nice for us to get back. But the moral of the story is these people are interacting with us and frankly i'll tell you the truth because this has worked out as good as it has with this even when we do go back in person and i'm really looking forward to it i'm keeping a video piece of this because i'll podcast it i'll, I'll stream it out of the class and then i'll put take the podcast and put it up anyway because it's worked out so well i'm going to try to keep all these pieces going because i need to keep the video going i need to keep the audio going and i need to keep my blog going and it's when I tell you that there's not enough good things that come out of this, I, I can't even begin to stress that. So you all need to, we need to work on how do we get you all to be able to do this and not to just be, um, ju not to just be a, either a one trick pony or a one and done or any of those things. I want to get everybody to the part of uh, where we can. So you just said, I can start out with my history of being a nurse. And yes, you can start out with being in a, a, a history of your nurse. What I don't want to do is I want to see you, I don't want you to be the I, me, mine show. I want you to get out and say, as my, you know, as the history, I've, I've done this, I've come from this, and this is why this is how it affects me when this happens or, you know, so that uh, people start to take the situation and you become a character within the situation and not the situation itself. So that's the, that's the other thing I, I want everybody to do is, or know and understand is, um, 
don't beat your point over, don't beat people over the head with your point and try to develop a persona so that people know who you are um, and they understand who you are. So your, your uniqueness shows through on the other, the other side of the con, on the other side of the coin, you need to make it be about them and not just about you. Okay. So, um, and just, I'm using this class somewhat as an example because it really is the best breathing example because you're experiencing it. So you sort of, you notice that I'm not necessarily talking about me. I'm trying to get y'all's questions answered so that you all can walk away with something and understand how this impacts your business. So I've now said to the lady with the nursing staff, I basically just told her how to go and put together a podcast that talks about nursing and nursing issues. And, you know, there's shortages in the industry. Harris County has got to be one of the most difficult counties in America to work in within the staffing agency uh, from a nursing standpoint. And I'm going to, I'm going to throw another one out here is that when I take one of these nursing staff nursing jobs, I have a question because do I want the, um, plastic surgery clinic in river Oaks or do I want Ben Taub? You know, and you, so what is the dynamics of that? And how does that look like? I mean, so there's a whole lot of different ways and approaches that this can be and how can that information be used? So I just want to make sure that we kind of get to that, that piece on that. So we make sure we're on a good priority. Somebody said, should we cite every reference? No, there's no citing references. This is your opinion. So there's no references unless you want to say on this day, my reference is my opinion on that day over there. There is no citing references, guys. This is about what you think, who you are, you're the expert. So don't cede that territory to anybody ever, whether it's in a podcast or anything, you need to speak from a position of authority every time you speak, period, end of story, okay? So no, there's no citing references. That went out the door with college and your senior thesis. All right, so let me see, what are the next questions? Says? Yeah, but if they're quoting something or taking something from yeah, somewhere else, yeah. they, okay. they do have to so say something about I'm that, taking, don't they? No, you're not putting a citation in. You might say, uh, according to the American Medical Journal, uh, nurses work 72 hours a day during COVID. And I think they actually work 86 hours a day. I, I mean, I'm being extreme in my example for a reason, but I'm not going to go put a citation or a reference and cite, cite something at the bottom that says, this appeared in the New England Journal of Medicine on July the 4th, you know, 2020. No Right. We're not doing that. Yep. All right. Quoting's one thing. Citations are completely different, and this is not the place for that. Okay. Next one says, are blog topics related to business values, missions, and vision? Okay. So everything you do should be related to your business values, missions, and vision. The way I handle myself, the fact that I come here, the fact that I talk and I take an interest in people that tells you how I run my business. All right. So everything you do, not just your blog, everything, whether it be answer a customer on the telephone, whether it be donating your time to the food bank, whether it be writing a blog, they all should be examples of your, your value, your mission and your vision. Um, I, will say that sometimes I find things that other people do offensive and I make that a blog topic. And I don't say, I don't come at them and say, well, we would never do that. That's not what I, I don't take a um, pious attitude with it, but I, I kind of say, Hey, this is the mistakes that I see, or this is one way people do this things, but there's better ways to handle this. Um, Everything I do tells you who I am as a person. And I, I really would encourage every one of you to develop the persona that you can go out and let people know who you are and what you believe and how you process the world, because those are the better clients. When you can fit with somebody better, you're going to have a much better relationship than if you just take anybody that doesn't fit your, your compass and your business. I mean, I want people that are somewhat like-minded. I mean, it's great to have somebody that's, you know, adversarial, but after a while, it gets very difficult to do business because you don't have the same. So you want that to come out. It's, this is, that's not just related to a blog. That should come out on everything you do every minute of the day. 
All right, so let's say I answered that one live. So now what's the next one say? I have a shop on the Marketplace plus Facebook pages. Are you suggesting I should have a standalone website? Yes, yes, yes. You need to have your own website always, 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 because you, it's kind of like what you're saying to me when these questions come up like this. It's kind of like saying, I rent an apartment. Are you telling me I should own my own house and that should be a goal? All right. And that's kind of what you're saying here. Everybody should go have a goal to own. I mean, unless you really just move around a lot and you, you want to live in a travel trailer. I mean, that's a different story. But I think everybody wants to get someplace that's theirs. Well, the problem is, is that a lot of people haven't understood that, that when you do that, you're not actually supporting yourself and your own brand. You're supporting somebody else's. So I would have a place on the internet that's mine but I also would have a place, I would also keep the Facebook page. It's like, you know, I just told you I sold that website and they kept me on. So one of the things I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna get a feed into Facebook and I'll be able to sell those products off of Facebook. But the reality is that's not my main thing. The website's my main thing. That website brings me five to 800 people a day. So I'm gonna go to the 500, eight, eight, five to 800 people a day and I'm going to support the side off of Facebook because that's another avenue. But my website is my core home base of operation. So just think of it as the difference between I'm renting. Better yet, not that you're renting a house. You're in a dorm in college because that's kind of what that is. You're not even renting something because you have no rights and say so. You're in somebody else. You're in a dorm where they say well, how loud you can play your music, how many visitors you can have. They control who can see your website if you don't pay for it or your Facebook area if you don't pay for it. So you're, you're wholly owned by the rules and regulations of Facebook or wherever you're doing this, which you said Facebook. So because you're wholly owned by that, that's, a, that's, a, that's not even an apartment complex. All right, oh, that's, that's, an, that's another level below that. And that's where I'm gonna go down to a dorm, dorm room. Go ahead, Sandra. Should, so if someone has a, a website have you ever seen someone create a web page on their website and put their facebook page there yeah that's fine i want that's 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 no problem bring your bit in fact i have my twitter feed embedded into my own home pages on my websites right so when i so, say something the twitter feeds are there awesome because you know some people want to hear what i have to say so if i say something important it'll show up there great awesome good thinking okay but i would never go run my whole website off of off of Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or because I don't have any control over those properties. So I could, if you were on Facebook 10 years ago, you could have built your website. You could have built your business. They were sending you people for free. They got you all sucked in and then famo, they changed the algorithm and you had to pay them a lot of money. It's kind of like, see, I hesitate to, to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. It's kind of like drugs. You kind of start on the low end. They give you stuff, you get hooked, and then man, the price goes up. So it's, it's sort of the same thing. It's like, we've always said that, um, that Google AdWords was like crack advertising because it was like the same thing. You were, once you were hooked on it, you couldn't get away. So it's the same concept. So yeah, don't, don't go down the road where you're locked to somebody because they control your destiny. And look, I, I've owned a business for 20 some years. And when I, I walked out of there, um, I, I didn't, I knew the second I walked out of my job in State Farm that I owned my own future and that nobody was ever, and when I say ever, I mean ever going to control or change the, my trajectory without me being directly involved in it. And I, I think that's the, the way you have to approach your web presence. That's the way you have to approach your business. You're, you, you're doing this to be on your own, to be out on your own. Why are you going to go put your destiny into somebody else's hands? And, and I think that's how you have to look at these. These are bigger concepts. I understand that. Um, but at the end of the day, yeah, this is, so I can just simply say to you, yeah, don't go put something on a Facebook page and use that as your primary spot. But the reason why is because you don't have any control and you don't want to be in a situation where you have no control, especially when it comes to your livelihood your children's livelihood, your retirement, and anything else that's attached to it, okay? Um, well, somebody just said, I, 
uh, Facebook may or may not be around in 10 years. Can you say MySpace? And that that really is that is really the, the, the right point. And some of this stuff changes like a whim. So you can't do that. I mean, I hate to say that, but you really can't. All right, so let's say that. Yeah, and the point that. also is to, on, face, on your Facebook, to drive them to your website. And it just so happened your Facebook is on your website as additional content, but Facebook's out there by itself and you want to drive them to your website. Right? Well, and that's my whole goal with everything I do is I want everybody to come to me. I want you to come and find me. Now, I have to put out um, some uh, you know, breadcrumbs, like these podcasts are breadcrumbs. I, I don't think you're going to come by and visit my site every day. Cause you know, I, I don't really make changes to it other than when I add a blog post or I add this. So, um, just make sure that, you know, you, you know, that you're putting new stuff up and that you're, you're doing it. And that's the whole purpose of this. Okay. But you want people to go to your website, period, end of story. You don't want them to go to har and I'm harping on har that kind of sounds funny, but I'm harping on Har because Har has been really um, pushing to have real estate agents give up their personal pages and move them and use Har. And when Har decides tomorrow, then once they get everybody and they decide we have everybody and their prices go up to $500, you're not going to have any place to go because you gave everything to Har. So see, this is where there is, there is that, you know, how many things can I pull in? And then when I have enough things, then all of a sudden the pricing changes and it's not so great anymore. By, by not participating, you remain having the options. You remain free. You remain to go do what you need to do. So just understand that that's kind of in play here. Uh, what is the name of your podcast? The Internet Marketing Clinic. That's it. Just like the name of this class. They're all the same, the same thing. So, and I actually went, and got the uh, domain. So if you put in Internet Marketing Clinic Houston, it takes you right to the page with everything on it. Um, you can do it at Apple, you can do it at Google, you can do it at iTunes, you can do it wherever you want to do it. I think I have everything except for iHeartRadio, mostly because I haven't sat down and thought about it. Um, because I have everybody else and I was like, do I want, I think I have to pay them. That's why I kind of have taken a wide berth on that because I'm not big on paying anybody anything. All right, let's see. So what's the name? We answered that. Done, done. Okay, next one says, how often did you blog uh, be published? Is it once a month okay? Should we try it for one to three a month? All right, so ideally, I and I have done a bad job since February. Since, since the state of Texas opened up, I've kind of been like a, a little bit inundated, so I haven't been able to do this much. I'm thankful for that. Um, but I would say at least do one a month. So, you know, you're say, I'm saying it's a podcast. Well, just think your podcasts come out one a month. Sometimes they come out every day. I, I think every day is too much for a small business owner. If you only want to do one a month, so be it. You're only going to have 12 a year. I, I think your target should be one a week if you're going to do with the podcast. Now, this is why else I'm saying to you, it's always easier to start with a video. I think, and I, and I even see it with like the talk to text thing. I think if I put a podcast on a desk and I told somebody to actually just start talking, they could do that a whole lot easier. Um, sometimes I've done this with customers and I say in the background and I put clear lines in, I ask questions and then I edit the questions out. And then it's just the person talking from point to point to point to point. So, um, but I, I would say at least try to uh, do uh, one, one a month, ideally one a week. So the person said, internet marketing what? No, internet marketing clinic, houston.com. Lots of four words. Okay, so there's that. Um, let's see how often we answered that. Next one says, what is your opinion about hiring someone to write your blog? Could you use that blog for a podcast or should it be written by me? So. Oh, that's a hard question. And here's why this is a hard question. When it comes down to it, most small business owners do not have the time to do what needs to be done. However, you need to make that time. And we do a lot like a lot of working with our clients directly, but it takes us a while to learn your voice. So, 
I will tell you, I can't have anybody ghostwrite me because when they do, it's very obvious it wasn't me. But that's because I have that suck the air out of the room weird personality that just goes and it comes out in my writing. Look, Sandra's shaking her head, yes. It comes out in my writing, it comes out in my blog post, it comes out, so it is who I am. And I have yet to meet anybody that can capture the my essence on paper. And usually what they do is they write it as if I'm a fictitious character that lives in Brooklyn. I never lived in Brooklyn. I lived in New Jersey. They were kind of geographically close, but other than an accent, that, that's really kind of where that stops. But I get that's usually how people rewrite me. So I don't like when people rewrite me. If you have the personality that somebody can rewrite you and capture you, and that works for you. Now, if you're the tax man, I probably could do a much better presentation of it than the accountant. And see, that's where the other side of this comes in from. Because the engineer guy, that's the nerd guy in the school, it'd be like saying, uh, I need to hire somebody. So here's a good example. Everybody knows who Sheldon Cooper is, okay? I think if I was working for Sheldon Cooper, I wouldn't want Sheldon Cooper to write his own his own material because he would be boring, blunt, and condescending. Okay, so it would probably be better to have somebody. So I don't know your personality, but my opinion is if you can get somebody to capture your essence, do it. But if not, don't settle because that's one of the most important things is in, in conveying who you are and who your business is about how this plays out. What else I will tell you is, huh, go ahead. Karen Venzen from New York, who comes to our internet marketing clinics often, who also attended our whole Mattress Max School of Selling it, it comments often and she's calling you a tough cookie that new Me. jersey tough cookie <laughs> that's it yeah and i mean that but that's it but if you don't do it right i come off like i'm hard there's a difference between being tough and being confident and being hard and everybody that tries to write me writes me as hard and i i am not and that's the that's where i kind of so this is where it's it, it, I hope you all understand because those of you that have been around me a while know exactly You're what direct I'm with that. Huh? You're direct, no nonsense. I am direct. That's the only way I know how to do it. And it works. It works for me. I don't know. Not everybody can be a direct and get away with it. I, and I get people that call me. I'm like, can you go call this person and tell them, why don't you do it yourself? Oh, because they can. So anyway, so I'm, I'm good at direct. Okay, so this next question is not related to anything, but I am going to go ahead and answer it anyway. What is a website versus a landing page? Um, a landing page is part of a website for the most part, or if I'm just building ad pages, uh, I may build landing pages out somewhere on the internet and then land an ad on them. Um, they're kind of, one is probably part of the other in 99% of the cases. Um, so that's that piece. Um, but yeah, those, those are kind of not the same. So I'm not going to worry about those. Okay. What are the best companies you recommend to host your website? Um, I'm going to skip that right now. Cause that's, that's a, that's a hard question to answer right now. And I'm not going to, I don't want to get involved in hosting. So can I, if it's okay with everybody, I'm going to kind of skip that one. Um, I'll just move over this one. And it says, can and should I link my WordPress blog to my business domain and the website that I have with Yahoo? And I, and must I pay for WordPress to keep my blog site builder sold out to a different company? Now I have to redesign my entire website because it's owned by a new company. Redoing hundreds of hours. Is it possible for WordPress to sell a different company? Okay. This is a fantastic question in disguise, okay? So the answer is, if you use wordpress.org, the files live on your web host and you have complete and utter control of them. The only thing, and then you, there's a backup feature that you can back it up to Dropbox, Amazon, wherever you want. And you have a little suitcase and go wherever you want, whenever you want. If you use wordpress.com, you're in the same problem that you have with this uh, website builder. As far as your domain name, everybody needs, I, I, someday, maybe sometime, Sandra, I have a new topic for us. I am going to do an intellectual property class on domain names, what they are, what the ownership is, 
how does it work? Because I can't tell you how many calls I get a day of people that have no idea what their domain is, how it is, where it is, what's done with it, um, how it works, and oh, by the way, what it's worth. And I mean, some of these domains, like the one I just sold, that the domain sold for $100,000, basically. So understand there's value in these. Um, and they, you know, we, at one point we sold the domain oilwell.com for something like 25 grand. Um, you know, so there's money in these and you need to understand what they are, but not to get off on a different topic. Your, um, my business domain and website, uh, do you want to hook them up? The answer is yes. You want your files. So think of your domain as your house, your website and your website files are the furniture inside your house. And just like if you move to a different house, you would get the moving van and they'd pick your files up and move them with you. Um, that's what should happen. Okay. So um, there's a, that's the way this should work. Everybody should have wordpress.org, O-R-G, and everybody should have their own web hosting company. To the person that asked me to represent, recommend the web hosting company, if you go trot yourself over to SEO 411, the questions on that, web, the answer to that question is on that website. That's probably, I'm trying to think how to answer that. But you need to have a web host that you trust and that you can do business with. So I'll, I'll kind of say that as well. Um, but you, uh, the, you, should you use your website in your domain? Yes, everything should be contained on that domain with wordpress.org, pretty much period, end of story, because that's the only way you stay autonomous. And the thing is that even if WordPress went away, let's say tomorrow WordPress went off the state of the planet, it's open source. So I could go to Fiverr or Upworks or someplace and go hire a programmer and have them build me whatever I want. So um, you would not be in this set situation of having hundreds of hours that you need to now flush down the drain. Um, the other question that I have for you would be, can the contents of that site builder be outputted? Um, we have some have had some site builders through the years that we gave away with our with the hosting platform and that when they when those companies went out of business we've always been able to export the pages out and import them into the new thing but that requires having somebody around you that actually knows how to do that which i'm, I'm blessed my system admin knows exactly how to do all those kind of crazy things um but at the end of the day there is that possibility. I would be asking, can you export the content? That's what I would be asking them because that would at least help you save the thousands of hours uh, situation. All right, done, done, uh, done. Do you know anybody that can do web maintenance? I don't know, think about that a minute. All right, so. Um, let's kind of get back to our blogs here a second. So we've talked about what it is blogging. Now I see a lot that say blogging versus podcast. It's not, I hope everybody understands now we're not one or the other. We are actually, um, talking about that. They are the same thing, different mutations of it. Um, what I will say, the analogy that I'm going to draw to this is something that we already experienced which is water, okay? Water can be wet, it, liquid, it can be steam, or it can be ice. And this is the same kind of thing. So this is a piece of content. Um, this is, and it's in three different forms. And I wanna make sure everybody understand that that's kind of the road that we're heading down with all of this. So this says, where do I find the keywords for the website of? So what do you mean the three different website? forms? Is it like um, the the video, the audio, and the in the summary? And the written word, word that would be the three forms. Yeah. So I would have one topic idea, which would be water H two O, and then it would be in three forms, which would be video, ice, or uh, video, um, <laughs> audio, and written. So that's the analogy that I'm that I'm using on that. Okay. Um, so we understand on that. This is where is the where do I find keywords, the SEO of my website? Um, well, see, that's an interesting question. Um, I almost want a little more information on what you're actually asking me, but part of me says I would go run a screaming frog on it, which that's pretty well 
uh, free software. Um, and then the other thing that I, I would do is probably uh, look at something like SEM Rush and see if I couldn't get a beat on what Google thinks my website's about, if that's what you're asking me. If the website's not been built, that's a whole different question. Uh, what I will say, and everybody should be using this tool from a keywords perspective, it's called Keywords Everywhere. It plugs into your Google Chrome browser. Um, and when you type a search term in, it gives you all the related words and how many people search for them. And I can't tell you how many people come to me and say, I want to rank on this term and I do a look up on it and it ranks on nothing. There is nobody in the earth looking for this term that you guys came up with. Um, and that's, that's a, it, it's an interesting problem because you, you got to put words in that people know what you're talking about. So, all right, let's get back to blogging here for a second. Okay. So I have talked about a few things here and we're going to, I want to talk about a, a little bit about the mistakes of things. Okay. Because I think that's where I think most people make the, have the issue is they make, um, the mistake and do it the wrong way. So when you sit down to write your blog post, you need to make sure that it serves the interest of your audience and of your company. So when I sit down to write a blog post, I write about you guys. I write for you guys. I put you guys first and foremost. We've worked for companies as big as Constellation Energy. Um, I've worked for you know, Rubbermaid. I've worked for really big companies before. Um, but I don't write blog posts that address the Exxons, the Rubbermaids of the world. I address you guys and what's in your best interest because you guys are the people that help support my, my business. Okay. These big companies in and out don't support me for 22 years. So Understand that when you sit down, create your blog post that serves your company's goals and your company and not acting like whatever, like a big company. So um, I'm trying to think of a good example of this. Like uh, if the, I'm a small clothes store and I write my blog post like I'm writing to a target audience, like Target the shopping or Walmart, okay? You don't want to do that. You want to talk about why you want to why you want to address the people that would shop in a small boutique and not the people that shop at Walmart. So just make sure that you understand who your audience is and who you serve, and make sure that the design is for who you serve. Um, if you sell tools to construction workers and you make the site pink and like with bubbles and champagne bubbles all down the side of it that that's not going to work because the tool guy is not going to come and buy a website from a pink frilly site it's just not going to happen so in the same way make sure that your 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 blog post is for what you think and what your company is align your po your company with where you want to go and about your um your viewpoint okay i i now if you want to act in I'll take me a minute. If I want to act like a large company, then I don't belong um, answering and interacting in the colloquial relaxed way that I do. Now, can I get up and put a suit on and go carry myself with the best of them if I need to? I sure can, but that's not really me, but I can do it when, when I want to. Well, my blog is the same way. Um, when I need to be serious, I may start out the blog and say, okay, I'm going to be serious in this. I know that's a new concept for everybody, but um, this is the tone and tenor I want to do because this is a very serious subject. And I've done that through the years with cybersecurity problems. Um, we did a, uh, uh, we helped uh, some of the Catholic church with their social media policies. Well, that was a very serious subject. So I didn't sit down um and make a joke about it i sat down and wrote it in a very i'm going to use the word scholarly manner so just know what you're doing and write who you're writing for because that's an important thing this one says do you purchase copyright when you create the website and start a blog no 
Uh, that's the so the the part of the lawyer will be played by Beth Guide. Um, so here's the thing: when you put that up, that's immediately copyrighted to you. It's basically a poor man's copyright. Um, so understand that. Just like if I wanted to write a book, I can put it in the mailbox and I can put a stamp on it and I can send it to my own house. And as long as I don't open it and it's got a postmark on it, that sucker's copyrighted. And if I ever need to take it out, I can do so. So websites kind of, you don't have to purchase anything. And if you don't, if you want real legal advice, I would say go to the legal marketing clinic, but, um, I, I have never copyrighted anything. And if anybody wants to argue with me, I dare them because it kind of sounds like me, everything I do, you can't pretend to be me. So I don't worry about it anyway. All right. Um, Sandra, one thing I'm going to say one night we need to give up. Um, we need to bring in an, and I have one to do, but we need to bring in an intellectual property lawyer that can answer. How do I do my images? How do I register a trademark? How do I, cause these are real questions. Um, somebody says there, John says we have a great IP lawyer. I think we need to bring one in and one of these nights we need to actually donate that time to them to do this clinic, but do it with an intellectual property attorney because I think it's, um, I think it's necessary because this question, although I'm kind of making a joke about it that I'm not a lawyer, I've handled my own IP for a long time because there was not really anybody that could because they didn't even understand what I was talking about half the time. I'd be like domain name, uh, don't know what that is, you know? So, but I think it would be a good topic for us to do. So somewhere in our notes, I think we should consider having an intellectual property lawyer at some point. Sure, well, John is one of your biggest fans. Remember he started, he was coming often and he even came on site when we did this on site. He's, he, he calls us sometimes says, when's the next one? So John, the, the IP people at SCORE, do they specialize in this area? That we're talking about? I actually found one. Yep. So if we don't have one. I found one that I actually, he, they actually spoke to me in a language I understood. And I was like, wait up a second. You are the first lawyer I have met in Houston that understands what I actually am talking about. And that's not, that doesn't happen to me so long. Well, what I, what I can imagine already is we have this IP attorney here with us from SCORE and you're the one asking him questions like a regular person yeah. um, and then and then uh, asking them tough questions too in that no nonsense matter of fact way that's going to be fun it's going to make i would be i would be very willing to do that because i i think these guys like this one says um my logo i want my logo protected so what you need to do is you need to go get a trademark on that logo it's called a service mark again this is the legal portion of the program and i am practicing law without a license just so we all know i'm only kidding all right. But the answer is, in order to protect your logo, the best way to protect it is to get a service mark on it through the Patents and Trademark Office at the United States government. I think it's six or seven hundred dollars to do. It's money well worth spent. OK, so. All right. So there ends the legal portion of our evening. OK, um, but I do think that was a good idea. I just will throw that out there. OK, make sure you don't forget who you are, okay? So when we sit down to do these things, you need to have your personality come out. And, and I will say this, when we made this jump to Zoom, I was not sure how I was gonna do that because I always interact and feed off the audience that you guys give me the questions and you guys help guide to where we're going. So I've always been a little bit concerned about how that was going to go and what this is. I think we've hit our stride with this, Sandra. I think we do just as good on Zoom now as we do on person. It took me a little bit to practice not to lose who I was. But my blog, my podcast, my videos, they all resonate who I am. And I never forget who I am. Now, it's easy not to forget who you are if you're yourself, okay? But I know some people that don't always do it that way. I kind of am myself, so it's easy to remember. But try not to get out of that or try to present you or your company as something that you're not. Because again, it's important to do business with people that like who you are, okay? If they don't like you, it's not going to go well anyway. So you're not going to really accomplish much being around people that don't that don't know what to do you know that you don't get along with on the first 
uh, situation. Um, there aren't, no, my, um, uh, the, the nun that taught me English in the fifth grade is going to roll over in her grave. So if there's a rumble, we'll know what happened. Okay. Um, how you write doesn't matter. Okay. Um, don't be stiff. I mean, don't use poor English and make sure you get a copy of Grammarly and you spell things correctly and you punctuate things correctly, but you do not have to write like you are writing a doctoral dissertation to put up a, a blog post. It's dry, it's unentertaining. You need to write like you talk. And, and what I, I tell people, let me see if I have it, I do have that, okay? Um, I have this little thing in my pocket and it's called a cell phone, okay? And it has a button on it that you can push and you can talk to it and you can write your whole blog post by talking to your cell phone and then just clean up the punctuation. So there's ways to do things and not to sound um, stiff or rehearsed or because that's not going to get you anywhere. And frankly, it's probably not going to bring you the right customer anyway. You see um, what Jerry's saying? Huh? Jerry's saying use Hemingway, to the Hemingway app to make sure your language isn't overly, overly what? Overly technical. technical. Yeah. Um, yes. I mean, that, that's, another, that's another thing to do. And I use Grammarly to correct everything too, to make sure that um, I, I'm not sounding like, it gives you a little smiley face, it gives you a little frowny face. So if I write an email and I, 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 I'm in a bad mood and I write, I know it's hard to imagine me in a bad mood, but I do get this happen. Um, but when it does happen, I, it makes a little frowny face and I'm like, oh, maybe I'm sounding too mean. I better go fix that. So it'll even fix type and all of that kind of stuff. So I don't, I'm not fami familiar with the uh, Hemingway thing, but if it does like Grammarly, it's money well worth spent. Uh, Carrie, my friend Carrie says, do you suggest using an editor? Now, I don't know how you mean that because I have an editor and her name is Kelly and she checks over everything I do. So I don't know if you mean use an editor like a human being to go through and read it or use an editor like I'm going to type, uh, oh yes, a human being. Well, I employ one just to correct all my emails. So I, you know, I would say yes, but if you can do your own editing and you're good at it, do it. And I, I probably would trust you to do your own editing. I, you're, you're kind of pretty thorough there. So I, I wouldn't worry about you too. Well, much. I think if you're going to do your own editing, you need to leave it alone for a little while and go back to look at it. Then you've got a fresh viewpoint and you'll catch things. But sometimes people go so quickly, they send something out and they see it just after they push send. That would be me. <laughs> that would be the person you're talking about. Um, oh no, I go so fast. I miss letters. I put the wrong thing. Sometimes I forget to put the word not. And then it says, I am mad at you. No, I meant the word not. I am not mad at you. You know, so that's, uh, you know. Well, so also you sometimes what you're typing cor corrects something incorrectly. And so they'll, well, yeah, there's meaning. that too. Yeah, don't depend on spell check. I'm, I'm really serious. Like Grammarly is embedded into your whole computer if you do it right. So, and I look at this Hemingway app thing, if that, that works for you. So, I mean, do, do whatever you need to do, but, but what I don't want you to do is sound like you're writing a textbook. I don't want you to, I want you to sound like you. I, I want you to be you. That's what I, that's what I want. So um, I know this is about mostly about podcasts and blogs, but in, but you're and you're making some references to Facebook and all that. But can you the the generalized topic for today was um, social media, generally speaking. So can you talk a little bit more about you know the 280 character message and how it's applicable to lots of different things and um, and 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 posting across different social media platforms. Well, I, the blog then needs to go out to multiple platforms so that I can, I can, yeah, we can talk about that in a minute. Um, okay. So um, what Sandra's saying, I, I, okay. I'm not a Twitter fan. I, I have to say Twitter is kind of devolved into some weird place of angry, hostile people that yell at each other from sunup to sundown. Um, so I, I kind of, unless I want to be angry and hostile, I don't go to Twitter. Um, the only thing I go to Twitter about is to complain about the Texans. Um, 
so I, I, that's my vent for the Texans. But short of that, oh, and the Astros, I root for the Astros there. So, but with all of that said, uh, at this point in time, folks, I'm going to tell you that I don't know that I, eh, let me rethink what I'm going to say. All right. From my SEO business, there's a whole community of SEO people that live over in Twitter. And there is some value for me to be an expert among experts. So I will at times participate in Twitter from that standpoint after I have to weed out all the ugly mean stuff that goes on. But past that, I'm going to tell you that one thing that I do with these blog posts and with these, with, the, with these podcasts and all these things that we're talking about doing tonight, I then take them and use them and push them out to these platforms. So they go out to Facebook, they go out to Twitter, they go out to, or, well, they go out to Twitter, they really do. Uh, they go out to Instagram. Um, I send them out to uh, LinkedIn. They go out, everyone I do, goes out repetitively. And the other thing is I have a plugin for WordPress that takes any and all posts that I do um, and sends them out to all the social media platforms. And, and what I find is when I am throwing all those social media, when I'm throwing all of that, those podcasts out at social media, it helps everybody gain traction. And the other thing is, again, it's a megaphone. So it allows you to be able to have a way to be able to communicate with people, push it out there, get it out in the, in the social media forms, and then bring that back to your own website. And I think those are very important things to do. Um, so I, I think, I, I always start with my own website. So everything I do starts there. Now you, and I, I will tell you, if I had a social media person here in the room, they would argue this with me. So I'm gonna just be, um, just gonna be honest with you. They're gonna argue this, but. I, I personally do not like good morning sunshine posts or good morning, today's gonna be a good day. I have my coffee cup and I, I can't take stuff like that. I, I don't need to know what your coffee cup looks like in the morning and I don't have any more value for you as a business because you showed me your coffee cup for the day. Um, so I have never been one that supports that. If I'm gonna put something on social media, media, it's gonna be something that you can use. And it's not gonna just be, especially if it's done in the name of my business. Um, so I, I would strongly caution um, oh, the person said, unless I sell coffee cups. Yes, and if you sell coffee cups, then you can put them out there. But my luck, the coffee cup person would be talking about the tennis balls, they throw their dogs. See, so this is where, I see the crazy. So the thing is that people have yet to really realize how to use uh, use that properly. Hey, come here, come on. So, um, you know, a lot of people talk about the ROI of social media, and I guess there's some to some degree, but really what that is, is building up your brand and who you are and setting the stage for who you are, whether you're an expert or not. And I think those are the more important things. Here he is again. He has to come and talk to us again. Sorry. I like that question in um, those, there. How do you share your blog post to Instagram effectively? Yeah, no, I, I saw that. Um, I actually, that software that I have that I'm telling you blog to social, it will do it. We actually made a graphic. And every, I have a cover art for the podcast. But what I do is for each one of these, I take the cover art for the podcast and I put the actual title on it. And then that's what I push out. So people um go ahead and go ahead and use that and push it out that way come here heart come on Shh, come on come on come on or not come on come on sorry hold on a minute we have a dachshund crossing go hey keep on go okay thank you sorry about that um carrie said do i ever use an infographic yes we make inf infographics all the time I've got no problem to do that. And you can push that out. We've done that too, made a blog post with, with, a, with an infographic in it and use the infographic as the leader into the blog. So those are all ways to push this through the social media situation. Um, but everything I do starts with my blog post. And, and you know, sometimes we'll do a blog post. We'll do it for clients too when I do it. I'll do a blog post and I'll write it all up and then we'll make a pros and cons infographic. And that goes out. Again, it's all different ways to reproduce something over and over and over again so that we can repurpose content in a way that um, makes us the expert, helps get us traction, helps get us out farther, 
and makes everything all work together. So this one says, do you use the same cover your podcast or do you change the graphic? No, I use, so here's what I do. The podcast is just like the cover of the album. It has its own brand. Um, and it has, I have my own little thing that I did. It's a picture. Beth takes pictures out the sunroof. They're awesome. So I took a, a sunroof picture of the city of Houston down by Bayou Place. I put internet marketing clinic on it. I put the title on it. Um, and I use the same picture, the same writing, the same cover every single time of the podcast. And then for Instagram, I take the cover art and put the title on and send that out to Instagram. So I make all of these things work together. Um, with the monthly class schedule though, I do make individual graphics for the classes and then for the month. So I, I do do all these things all kind of at the same time. Again, because look, time is short, right? And everybody that has um, extra time to do things in the world, um, if I can do one thing and reuse it six times, that to me is a, a lifesaver versus doing six things one time, because that now has become a huge time sink. Um, and you have to think that way as a business owner. You want to think about it in both in both directions that how do I take my efforts and use it in multiple ways? And that's kind of what I'm teaching you to do here um, and pushing it out and creating it and using it in multiple in multiple ways. And I, and I will say that although not a social media platform, the blog, the podcast world is just another whole set of, of places that you can post about your business. And if you do so within their rules, it's going to help drive you pretty far down the road. And that's, I think, the uh, really big thing to do. Um, do, you ever so do, uh, do you ever do a 30 second video or one minute video that leads to something longer? No. Like it pulls them in like a little commercial and they get no. interested? No. no? I don't, I've never had to do something like that. So I've never done that. I don't, and that's another thing you asked me how long this is important because that, that is the right thing. So normally I would say 30 minutes on your podcast. All right. Now I take this class and leave it in its raw form. Basically I may cut the dog out cause he's annoying. Um, but although I love him, um, but, uh, I use this in its raw form and I'll, all of mine are two hours. So when I, I could, and my original goal was to segment these. So you ask me a question and if it takes me 10 minutes to answer it, my original goal was to drop these in 10 minute segments and put them out there that way. And I think people would probably appreciate that more than an audio book. Um, but on the other side of the coin, the integrity of this class and how we get from here to here I think it needs to stay intact and it needs to stay together. So I've put it out there. So mine all run two hours or an hour and 49 minutes or something along those lines. But for a normal person, 30 minutes is fine. The blog posts, um, what I'm going to tell you is they need to be a minimum of 900 words. Um, if they go out to be 1500 or 2000 words, I'm cool with that. That's okay. Um, that just means you had a lot to say. Um, they need bulleted lists within them or uh, numbered lists. So if I give 10 reasons to make a podcast, all right, I would, the bullets would be those 10 points. Those 10 points, you're writing on the one through 10, those uh, headings, they need to be bolded. So make sure that you make this in a way that somebody can scan it. If you're using WordPress, you need a table of contents plugin so that people can go and go right down that table. It just kind of works like Wikipedia. Um, people are used to using it. Google uses it. You get a little more credit for it. But enumerate and make it easy to read. Make sure your paragraphs have, you know, subheads and they're broken up and there's a lot of white space between them because when you start to get into something that's a thousand or 1500 words, you know, that starts to get kind of long and people don't want to read long. So if you give it to them in small paragraphs that as they scroll down, they can just read the pieces that they want to read. It's going to work better for them. So that has to do with that search engine optimization and yes. becoming an expert. Can you talk about that? Well, that's exactly what I just gave. We'll put all that together. So if you just do what I just said to do, it's going to, it's going to help optimize that. If you put keywords in it, you're going to end up being in a whole lot better place than if you don't. 
So just understand and put some keywords in those, those words. Um, so this one says, why 900 word minimum? Uh, because anything less than that, Google starts to say, hey, wait up, maybe you don't really have a lot to say, or it's not really a value. Um, it's, they about actually, a, it's about being recognized as an expert in that yeah. field, in that area. They, they, the longer it is, the better it is, but it better be engaging if it's that long, because it's, you know, they, they, if you don't have anything, if you only have 300 words to say, chances are you really don't have much, yet it's really not a solid topic, I think is probably the best that's it's just in these days, that. it seems counterintuitive sometimes to everybody telling you short, short, it's got to be short. You know, people don't have a long attention span, it's got to be short. Yet what you're talking about has to do with Google search and, and you're, you're rising to the top of a Google search as an authority, right? Yes, this question is interesting. It says, tell us where to place the keywords in the post. So you would put it, you would put it in your headline so this might be how the, the like this class is probably going to be blogging and podcasting where to start. So the blogging, the, the podcasting would be the pieces that would be there. Um, I might open up and say, okay, I'm going to give 10, 10 tips on how to start a podcast or a blog. And these are what they are. Um, and then I would go through. So the first bullet point um, or the number one bullet point, you want to try to make sure there's a keyword in it. And if you can do it, you want to make sure that you make that an H2 tag um, so that it has those attributes to it. Um, you know, uh, the, the first point I would say that on this one that like we're talking about, it talks about um, create a blog post that serves your community or your company goals. So the, what would get picked up out of that is create a blog post or how to create a blog post. Um, so, so on and so forth, you would do this all the way through. If everything you do, um, I'm also going to say something else. Um, and this might be a little bit hard to wrap your head around, especially if you've never heard me before and have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, but when I sit down to write a blog post, I know that there are three basic truths within my company. We are a web hosting company. We are an SEO company. We are a web design company. And every post I put has at least one, if not all three of those words mentioned in it, linking out to some other part of the website that's about that. And that's important that you know what the truths of your company actually are and you fold them in when, with whatever you do, okay? Um, and, and thematically then every page, every blog post, everything that you do starts to have those truths. I, I would say I'm using the word truths. Maybe some of you would use the word services um, but I know what my keywords are. Every one of you should know what your keywords are. Someday when we all see each other again, we may have a, how do I find my keywords class? Because I think it would do everybody really some good to have like a hands-on, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to make you make me a list and then I'm going to have you bring it to me and see how well you did on it. And I'll kind of basically grade it on the spot. And I've kind of done that before with some things. But that keyword class, we could write that down too, Sandra's another class to do. Yeah, and I think I remember once at A Leaf Hayes, we did that. And yeah, we did. Well, actually, we did one while we structured a website. Some guy bought me a piece of paper that was like as big as the room. I was like, I couldn't even believe. But anyway, um, so um, that's that's that piece of the story. So you want to you want to know what they are and everything I put. Um, has those words in it. So just make sure um, that you know what your truths are about your business and they appear in it. So this one says. So wait, wait, let me ask you about that again real quick before we move off of it. Like mission, values, culture, you know, the, the vision. So for, it starts with that and then it really, it gets down to refining that over time and somewhere in that lie your key words, right? Maybe. Um, I, I'm going to say that those, those keywords that are the core backbone, because 
if you said about my company, I would say honestly and integrity. Well, those aren't keywords. SEO and web design are keywords. I so see. those are really the services I provide. But I make sure that when I reference them, you know, I may say a good web hosting company would do X or a good web design firm would do Y. I mean, so I do have that type of uh, my moral value in the sentence probably, but I try, and I, maybe I'm saying I, I would use that maybe as services, maybe for right, the, the easiest way to define it for you guys is just to say services. Okay. All right. So um, that would be, so John's putting up a piece of the New York Times. What does it say? The New York Times art section has a great article on podcasting. Serious XM Steel is the latest podcast salvo growing like a weed boy big boys are getting well everybody's starting to get a platform uh, audible went and did one too and i'm gonna have to see if i can put me on audible because i think i would do good on audible you could have me as a downloadable book and take me with you on your audible app so you know the more places i can go the better off we are but i think the thing is this okay you have to have a subject that people would want to listen to. So just make sure you know that. Um, I've had, if I'm a cook, maybe I want to I want to come at you guys and I want to I want to talk about um, what our recipes are for today. And then the next day, our next thing is how to be a how to be a cook. And I want to talk about how to go to the grocery store and pick out the right vegetables. So that kind of thing would go right. We have the person that talked that, that, and I don't know if they've been around or not since all of this, but they, they had a place where you could go and blow dry your hair uh, after the gym. That's an awesome place. That's an awesome thing. They could talk about hair, hairstyles, hair, uh, shampoo, how to take care of your hair, different types of hair. You could just go on. You could have the call of the, the hairy podcast. I mean, and you could just talk about hair and, and all day long. Some people may want to hear about hairstyles and, and the ways to, to personal grooming habits. So, I mean, there's lots of different things, but you need to find that thing that your company does that people would want to hear what you have to talk about. Now, again, back to the engineers, that might be hard, but, you know, maybe, maybe it's something that appeals just to engineers, you know, what's going on in the industry. I mean, there's all kinds of oil and gas magazines. So just matriculate it out um, to that. So, uh, I mean, that's, that's what I would do there. Um, let me see, what else have I missed here? So about the, this long 900 words and 1100 words, 1200 words, can you break it up so that it doesn't seem that long because it's got well, that's what, that's what I'm saying, bullet point it, put some, put yes. some, like 10 things in it. So when I sit down, I showed you my little book, my little book says blogging versus podcast, blogging and SEO. How do I format it? Did I grammarly and why I want to use it? Developing a personality. Um, those are going to be my points. So when I write my article, um, this is this is what it's going to be. These are what's going to be on that. Um, so that's that's why I'm going to that. And that's why I did it. So when I sit down tonight, if I wanted to put this class there, I already have the outlines of what I talked about and what I would want to cover in writing. I already have here on my tablet because I already mapped out this class and made sure I, I did this. Um, you know what that reminds me of in our small business success series, we talk about, you know, you know, ideation and um, using post-its to, you know, keep putting down the most important things so you can move around the post-its and, and develop your business assumptions and get down to the most important things. So what you're just talking about right now and taking your notes all the way through it, you know, you're developing your, 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 the, the, the most important parts of your story. So if you were gonna do 1100 words on this, you're already writing it by thinking about what the most important thing is and, the, and you're picking your most compelling headlines for, to, to talk about in your, in your, your writing. So. Right. And what I like about that a lot is that it, what it does is it makes it simple. Like we like to be talked to where it's so simple that we're, we're teaching something complex about our business, but in a simple, straightforward sort of way. And when someone can understand it in that straightforward sort of way where it's easy to talk about, they, they believe you more, they're comfortable with it, they feel smart, you feel smart. So being able to talk in a basic, 
common sense sort of way is what we're talking about in terms of what's the most important thing in it. And now say that, you know? That's exactly right. Um, one of the other things I'm gonna caution though is one of the things that people do is they go too broad. Um, now I've gone broad on things and actually done well, but for the most part, when I get really granular on something, um, what is SEO was really broad. It's actually gone a whole lot further than what I thought it would go. Um, it's gone pretty far, but um, you know, if I just start that, what is a blog? And that's my topic. Well, gosh, I'm going to need to really narrow that down. My topic on this is going to be blogging and podcasting. All right. And I may put blogging versus podcasting and call it uh, Kong versus Gorilla or Godzilla, just because that's in the movie theaters right now and figure out how to work all of that together. Okay. Um, so, you know, and, and, you know, the, the, what is podcasting? What is blogging? What are they? How do they work together? I mean, all of that. And I have my, my points already and I'm going to put them in there, but make sure you have a narrowed down focus. Don't just go with something really, really big because the better your focus is, the more um, concise and the more information and the higher your quality is going to be. Um, I think that's going to be a, a big deal. Um, this one says, someone told me to start only with one platform and start building. I started Facebook, have my website, a podcast, but I really haven't done much with Instagram. Is there an order that you recommend? Yes, start with a website then go to Facebook and Instagram and wherever else you want to go. But the, the, where this is out of order is start with a website. Everybody needs to start with a website and get that website to where you're proud of it. And the content says what you want it to say, and then start going out and pushing it on Facebook and then go and put a podcast up. And if, when you put the podcast up, it needs to go back to your website, not back to your Facebook page. So, as far as, you know, what order do you do it in? I start with my website and then move all the way out to wherever else I want to go. And I mean, I only added the podcast, what, a year ago? I guess it's been a year ago, May. There was never a podcast. For 21 years, there's been never a podcast. For one year out of 22 years, there was a podcast. So, you know, you, I just kind of adapt as I go, but everything comes off my website. So that is the order. Um, and I, I can't really stress that if you don't walk away with any other piece of information, you need to have a website, period, end of story, because everything else you don't control, including the podcast porn platform. All right. Um, even as much as I'm saying have a podcast, I wouldn't tell you to have podcasts without having a website because the podcast needs to live on the website. I mean, you know, so let's let's kind of throw that one out there, too, because that's a whole nother part of this. So, I mean, start with a website. So everything's in one place. So no matter what happens and who closes down or who, who wants to go from $9 a month to $900 a month, you're not caught in that. You need to be autonomous. And that's the, I, I know I keep sounding it and I can't, I don't want to be like a broken record on it, but that, that's like the biggest thing you can do. Um, so we talked about making your, your information concise, but also make sure um, that there's a topic or in the reader that there's a reason that they want to do this. Five reasons you don't want to miss knowing about SEO or five reasons everybody will tell you SEO is dead, but is it really? I mean, so just make the value proposition in your headlines. I, I, headline writing has always been an art form, really. I, I will say that's always been an art. Um, so make sure that you're able to do a good solid um, uh, headline on your stuff so that you get that there's a reason to do this. Read this and you will learn how to. Uh, be afraid if you don't read this. Um, you know, make sure that there's a reason that somebody wants to read what you have to say. Um, not a clickbait type headline, um, but make sure they read it. Um, this is something that I do. I can't help it. It's like breathing air, but you shouldn't do what I'm going to tell you to do. I get away with it. I don't know if you all get away with it. When you write, don't write everything in your head at the same time simultaneously. Okay. 
these classes tend to be me, everything that I have to say on a subject, how much can I say in two hours? And it is a brain dump. It is a brain dump and download of information on any particular topic we ever try to do. But when you do that, you need to sit down and, and make sure that you are kind of round it back in. And that's partly why I put the list in because of all the things we covered tonight, I'm not gonna talk about the stuff that has nothing to do with what's on my tablet here. I'm not gonna add to it or add stream of cost, conscious thought to it other than what's in this book here. So when I put it, so I have a framework to work within and I don't go crazy because otherwise I could have a 5,000 word essay on everything I said tonight. Um, and the other thing is, let's not do stream of conscious blogging, okay? Because people don't want to read stream of conscious blogging. Whatever your pops into your head should not come out your fingertips, okay? So just try to stay on point. Try to have an ed outline. Try to know what you're trying to do because if you don't do that, you're going to end up... Um, you're going to end up in trouble. Losing um, people. You're going to end up losing people. Yes. Sandra, this is my favorite question. I have Shopify. Should I do something different? <laughs> They're all the same. Okay. So yes, the answer is yes. Because at the end of the day, Google doesn't see Shopify right. 95% of those sites have no rankings on them. And they're not here to get your website ranked. There's a whole, we've talked about this multiple times. Um, we have a whole class. We did a whole class in this clinic on what website design tools to buy and which ones not to and why. So there, that's out there. Um, and it's very important. It's a very important decision. Um, make sure that if a, a user invests time in sitting and listening to something that you have to say or reading something that you have to say, that there actually is something that they can walk away with. There's nothing more frustrating than sitting there. Yeah, I don't think anything of big commerce either. Um, they're, they're another one. Uh, none of these sites rank. I, I mean, I promise you, there's a lot of reasons for it. We can have a whole class on web design tools again, but at the end of the day, these things will not rank because they're not designed to rank and they go against the Google algorithm. That's probably the nutshell way to say it. All right, so when you're trying to get people to give something to walk away with, um, you know, make sure that they have something concrete. There's nothing worse than investing time with somebody only to find out that they didn't really say anything when you get all the way to the end of it. So make sure that you have that going for you. Um, if you use data in your post, um, and, and, so I have to sound arrogant for a second. I don't use a lot of data and percentages in my posts and quoting sources and all this other stuff because at the end of the day I'm actually on the expert side of that equation so I don't tend to need to cite other people it goes back to the citing thing um, but if you think you need to do it in a way that says based on this this is what happens. Don't just say, I think more people are doing X. You know, I, just like, I just did it in this big commerce thing. I just said to you, no, don't do big commerce, don't do Shopify. But I followed it up with 95% of those sites don't rank. We have study after study after study that seem to indicate that those sites don't rank. Uh, the same with Wix, Weebly, Web, and Squarespace. Those websites don't rank. And because they don't rank, well, now I have a website and it looks all pretty, but I, I have no vehicle to be able to drive it and get it to where I need to go. So, all right. What other questions do we have? Because I'm, I'm done for tonight. WordPress. The question said, what ranks? WordPress. I really, I, 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 again, I, I always, I, I don't have, I don't own WordPress. I have nothing, no financial gain in WordPress, but the right answer is WordPress. And make uh, it WordPress. All right. Dot org. It, it's, it's a platform. Okay. So understand but whether big commerce is powered by WordPress or not, it doesn't matter. It's a platform and it's something you can't control. When I need to go make something to go work the way I need it to go work, I go put a plugin in or I get my, 
my little system admin guy and I say, I need you to go fix this because Google doesn't see this. Uh, we have one right now. Um, and I'm debating what I want to do with it to address it. The home page of the website doesn't have a H1 tag on it by default. And, and I have to go in and on the home page of the website, we have to make sure we set them because by default, whatever we did, it's not doing it by default. So I'm going to go get my little developer guy and I'm going to say, okay, I need you to write me a snippet of code that says, don't make the logo, the H1 tag, please make the title tag at a page be the H1 tag. So that's, there's a million and one ways to go ahead and handle this. Um, but you can't, big commerce, you have no say over what, and if big commerce goes out of business and your website goes dark, where are you going? What are you doing? So again, you need to be autonomous. You need to have a handle. You need to be able to go wherever you want to go. So this last one says, thank you for your engineers. Okay. okay. You're very welcome. Is there anything else anybody else has tonight? Okay. We're out. That's a wrap for this week's Internet Marketing Clinic. We'll see you next week. Thank you.